right, welcome back to another review. Today we're doing our first Pilsner. Not just any Pilsner, the Pilsner, I guess you could say. The Pilsner Urkel. This is actually technically a pale lager, right? Which kind of gave birth to a whole bunch of imitations that became the Pilsner. Is that true? This is what I kind of heard about this. What do you know about that? I know exactly the same. It started as a pale lager, but because of the origin and the town in which it was brewed at the beginning, it acquired that name. The, I don't know how to pronounce it correctly, but Pledzen, like I think is how you read it at least. And that's where the name Pilsner come from. That's so cool. And I was actually reading that nine out of 10 Pilsners or pale lagers that are brewed in the world today are actually directly based off this beer. It's become that much of an influencer in the world today, in the world of beer, to think that that's so crazy. I, I just, I'm shocked. I've actually, I only heard about this beer recently and I've never tried it. And I've said this before in reviews that I love when we're reviewing beers that one of us haven't tried before. You know, because then you get that real life kind of honest reaction to it. And I'm really excited to see if, was it just the first one? And that's why these were all kind of based off it and it is as well known as it is. Is it because it's really damn good? And that's why the other ones are based off of it. Well, it's, it's going to be interesting. Like if you've never had it, it's definitely going to be a live fun reaction. I've had it uh, on tap and in a can. I can say that on tap as usual, like it tastes a little bit better in my opinion, uh, but I think the can is actually very close. It's not like a huge difference. So it's gonna be interesting to see like uh, what we think tonight. I Look, as influential as this beer is and as unique and original as it is, it's kind of like the OG fail lager and P OG Pilsner, which is pretty incredible. Should we get right into it, man? Should we crack these open? I'd say we should. Like we waited long enough, my friend. <laughs> I think we have. All right. The moment of truth. Look at that sound. Listen to that. Love that sound. Well, I know it definitely looks like a lager. Yes. That's for sure. Yes. These are actually really easy to find too, surprisingly, where I am at least. In Ontario, I can just kind of run over to a liquor store and they have them everywhere in, in abundance. I was kind of surprised when you uh, suggested it because I, I figured like, oh, can he get it up there? That's awesome because that's, I, I like this one. I, I get it often, like not often, but like sometimes. Yeah, we're friends. Cheers. What, what, are, what are all these beers that you're hiding from me? All these amazing beers that we're discovering in reviews. And you say, yeah, I have it all the time. I had one just earlier today. I had one yesterday. I have 10 in my fridge right now and I've never heard of them. You need, you need to start opening up your beer vault and you need to start telling me all these good beers that you're secretly hiding and not telling me. I I I, I apologize, my friend. I'll, I'll I'll start being a little bit more open about <laughs> the ones that I purchase. I don't do it on purpose. It, it's amazing because now we're doing this, and now we have all these different beers that you can think of off the top of your head that we can both find together, and that are probably interesting for a lot of our audience because they've maybe had it too in one situation or another. Cheers, my friend. Let's get right into that aroma. Aroma cheers. Cheers, aroma cheers. Uh, since you've never had it, I'm gonna let you start on this. Thank you, thank you. Okay, let's go. Nice, that's, I was kind of just expecting a regular, like light lager or Pilsner aroma, but it's it's much more complex. There's, um, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm just give me a second, because I poured this out about a minute ago, so I'm gonna freshen it up. Why not? Why not? Let's do that, Mike. So there's something there that I can't pinpoint. And maybe you will, because I'm really, really curious to hear what you're going to say now, but there's something really <laughs> interesting that I just don't, I don't have the word for it. It's not coming to me right now. There's definitely a smokiness. So the smokiness on the aroma is the first thing that jumps out to me. That's how I would describe it. But there's so much more there. But then it's just kind of gone. That's why I had to pour it out again. Um, I, I found the aroma was really, really strong right away. I got a big hit of smokiness, but then it was just gone and now I'm not getting anything. This is officially a pale lager. As far as that goes, the, the aroma is very nice. 
Um, you know what? I'm going to go with a one on three for the aroma on this one. It's there. There's something, there's like a nice toasted uh, smoky element that's there right away, but then it disappears. I would like if that toasted smokiness stuck around a little bit more. So it's going to get a one for me to start off with, which is nice. You know, it's, it's a nice, it's a nice aroma to start off with. Go right ahead. I, I think you might be able to nail the descriptor a little better on the aroma. So please go ahead. So, um, I, I agree with you with the roasted character. It's more of a almost, uh, Roasted, but not not very dark roast. Almost uh, caramelized malt. Uh, I would describe it as. As far as the um, that secondary aromas that you, you you were mentioning, I I kind of pick up a little bit of a um, herbal, almost I don't want to say minty, but but let's say aromatic herbs, uh, which obviously comes from the the type of hops that is used. That is very particular to the style. Uh, but I think it balances the, the the maltiness in a very particular way. And I do agree with you. It's it's very subtle. Like it's there and then it kind of like fades away pretty fast. Even in this glass, like it's where well, you can still smell it a bit, but it, it's it's very gentle. So I'm a little torn here. Um, I think that I might probably lean a little bit more towards the two because I kind of like this type of beers in general. I find the, the smell, even if very subtle, extremely refreshing. But I'm going to stick with the one like you did, because uh, again, I think that it has all the elements, but they're very soft. Uh, so I think that's the reason, the only reason why I'm not giving you the two. It's just that they're there, they're complex, nice, uh, but not quite as prominent as I would like them. The OG Pilsner around since 1842 with a nice light aroma. Nothing too offensive, a nice little toastiness that we both enjoy. I agree with you. I really like a toasted aroma on a Pilsner or a lager. So this is really nice. Okay, let's go right into taste. Since I started with the aroma, I guess I'll jump into the taste first. Cheers, my friend. Cheers, my friend. The original Pilsner. Let's see, what does it have to offer? Wow, that's really good. It's, you know what? There's only so much you can do with a light ale or a Pilsner in terms of a taste, right? There's not a million different uh, flavor profiles that you can accomplish, but this is something a little bit unique, which is cool. I wasn't expecting that. I thought it would be pretty straightforward. I was almost expecting this to taste like a, like a Heineken almost, but this is, it's unique. Let me, I gotta take another sip there. I, I get the toasted element on the taste right away. That's the first thing. Wow. Again, this one's kind of confusing me. Normally I'm not at a loss for words to try and describe beers. This one has a lot of elements in the aroma and the taste that I just can't pinpoint with a word. There's something else there. There's definitely a bitterness. I taste the hops and I taste the toasted and those balance really well together. And there's something interesting going on in the finish that I'm excited to talk about next. But for a light lager like this, or I guess it's technically a, a Pilsner, right? I guess um, it's really good. It's flavorful, but it's light. Um, I really like that toasted element. I like that it's bitter at the same time too. A lot of beers like this try and hide the bitterness to make it more palatable and easier to drink. This doesn't hide the bitterness. You know what? Maybe it's just because we've tasted so many delicious beers lately, but I'm going to stick with uh, a one on this one. It's nice. It's really, really nice. It's unique. It's a little different, but it's not, it's not reinventing the wheel. There's something that really stands out. Um, for me, but you know what? One ain't bad at all. One is, it's a nice beer. Yo, I was uh, thinking while we were going through your uh, your description and uh, I think the palate experience is uh, very similar for me too. Like you get that initial sweetness, uh, a little bit of acidity on the side of the tongue, like almost crisp that like brings up, uh, makes you salivate a little bit. And, and that bitterness is probably what is distinguished. Like it runs through the middle of your palate towards the back and it builds up towards the end, but it's not unpleasant. It's very light again, and it kind of invites you to go back. I, I call the herbal note uh, coming from the hops. To me, it comes a little bit towards uh, the end, like in, in the rich nasal experience, like when taking the sip. Um, yeah, on, on the on the palate, I have to say that I find this actually quite uh, quite enjoyable. Uh, the on the nose, I was a little bit on the fence, but here personally, I'm going to lean a little bit more towards the two. So I'm going to stick with the two here for the for the taste. You know what's interesting? I'm not getting a sweetness at all on it. That's funny, and I was really hoping that you would come up with a descriptor that I couldn't think of. I'm not getting sweetness, but I definitely get the bitterness. 
I'm definitely tasting the hops and that toasted element is there. That's really interesting. We're having like different experiences with this beer for the first time, which is pretty cool. If I'm gonna go right into the mouthfeel, the carbonation is there. It's, it's, I mean, the bitterness is really prevalent in this beer and the bitterness makes, gives it that tingle on your tongue, right? So it's kind of like, a, it's a really interesting uh, sensory experience in your mouth, which is, it's, it's really nice. Uh, just because I gave the other two elements a one, um, I'm gonna bump this up a little bit higher for mouthfeel. I think it's really, it's really vibrant. It's really interesting. I'm gonna give it a two on three for mouthfeel. It's got the tingliness, the bitterness, the carbonation kind of together. It makes you salivate a little, like you said, and it's really inviting. It makes you want to come back and take another sip. Sorry, my friend, I freshened it up a little bit. I had to taste it again to make sure. Uh, Man, I'm doing the same uh, thing. Don't worry, don't worry. We gotta do what we gotta Zach, do. You need it. Um, I think I couldn't have described it better the way you said. I I, I agree with you 100% uh, on the mouthfeel. Like uh, it kind of continuation of what I was saying on the taste. Uh, for me, the mouthfeel like stands on that uh, same line. The bitterness is definitely the the element that that stays the longest. Uh, and bitterness is also something that it's interesting because it builds up with time. So depending on uh, you know, how long you wait in between sips, so you're going to taste the bitterness more and more, which is what's happening right now. And I find that quite enjoyable because it's not quite like an IPA, but it's very refreshing. And um, I think like nice cold uh, Pilsner like this, like every day. So yeah, not great, but good for sure. So two for me as well. So it's interesting that you mentioned an IPA because going into the finish, this is really, really similar to an IPA in the bitterness, but kind of just like a light IPA. It's really, really nice. The bitterness is really strong. The, the finish is all about the bitterness on this. It's a lot stronger, but it's it's very well balanced at the same time. It's not an overpowering bitterness. It doesn't linger too long. It lingers just the right amount. It's kind of make you salivate a little bit and make you want to take another sip. Even though it, it's good, it's I really, really like it. I'm gonna have to go one on the finish again, uh, just because it's nice. It's a very, very good finish. That bitterness is very balanced, like I just mentioned. Uh, but there there aren't a lot of interesting elements there. I would have liked to maybe taste a little bit more of uh, the toastedness on, on the finish, on the aftertaste kind of lingering a little bit, maybe a little bit more smokiness, uh, but it, it's very nice. I agree on the one on three of the finish. It um, I would want something uh, a little bit more interesting there uh, other than just that like hoppiness uh, that, that stays. It's just extremely pleasant and nice, but having a different element would be uh, would bring it up a notch. So. All right, well, we got through all of those, bring us through to the overall now. This I have to think about this one a little bit. This might be another one of those situations where I'm gonna have to ponder it and sleep on it overnight and have a couple of them and let it stew and simmer. You for sure might need that. And you see, it has the red seal there, so that might that might be the case. Like we, we need to check a couple of those red seals to make sure they're all the same. It got mostly ones for me. You know, it had that one, two in there. I think on the overall, I'm gonna have to go one on three again, and this isn't a knock on it. It's, again, in our rating system, anything between one on three is good. One is nice, two is good, three is great. So this is a very nice beer. It was a pleasure to drink it, to, to smell it, to take in the aromas, to experience the mouthfeel and the finish. It's obviously, it's been around for a long time. It's the OG Pilsner, uh, but it's, it's, it's a one on three. I would like something maybe a little bit more there, like a little bit more in, on the finish, maybe like I said, a little bit more toasted elements a little bit more smokiness, a little bit more flavor. It's lacking, it, it has the promise of flavor and then doesn't really deliver, in, in my opinion. Like, So um, I'm debating, I, I was thinking while you were uh, talking, I, I think I'm sitting right there, like maybe I'm leaning a little bit more towards the two. Um, so on, on the overall, I think like the more I think about it and, and if, I, if I'm just thinking purely about, uh, you know, the experience, I think I'm leaning, a little bit more towards the one. Um, so I'm, I'm going to stick with that. And again, not because it's a bad beer uh, or it's, I love it. Uh, it's just like uh, there is something to me that is missing to bring it up to that too, for me personally. But I do like the fact, and I'll say this, that the, as, a, as a Pilsner, it has this very unique bitterness character uh, that you probably won't find in any other imitation at this point, considering that this is the original one. Uh, so for that, like, you know, for sure, like a big, uh, big achievement. But uh, for me, yeah, I would say like one overall. All right. So tallying up our scores, what does that come out to on five? 
taking into consideration our five uh, rating elements, for me, it comes out to uh, two on five, which is in our category, a nice beer. <laughs> so all the way along, two on five ain't bad. And for Alessandro, it's a little bit higher. His came out to a 2.33 on five. So a little bit higher, right about halfway there, maybe a 50% score. Look, to be honest with you, it's hard for loggers and pilsners to score high in these rating systems because loggers and pilsners by design are meant to be easy drinking, right? They're meant to be put on ice, drank really cold and to go down easy with a little bit of flavor. So they're not gonna score really high, most likely in mouthfeel, taste and finish or, or overall. They're not super outstanding in that sense. It doesn't mean they're not good. It just means that on these rating scales, they fall a little bit short, right? And so, you know what? I'm so happy that we got to try this. The fact that if that stat is true, that's out there on Wikipedia, that this has inspired nine out of 10 lagers or pilsners that you drink out there that have been brewed in the last hundred years, and inspired all pilsners in general, that is pretty amazing. So this is an historic beer. So I'm happy that you're in beer brackets. We got to break this down, review it for what it is. Really, really good. Any closing remarks? Well, uh, I would say that, as you said, like this is a kind of beer that uh, if it's a hot summer day or if you're just wanting to have a nice cold beer, that classic nice cold beer, this is definitely one that fits into that description. Uh, I love the fact that uh, we analyzing in this way, like we found out like that, that bitterness is actually a little bit more pronounced than what I remembered. Uh, so yeah, I'm definitely gonna go back to it like in the future. So it was a pleasure reviewing it with you, my friend. Cheers. It was a pleasure as always. Cheers, my friend. Guys, thank you for joining us once again for another review. If you haven't already, like the video, comment down below. Let us know what you think of Pilsner or Cal. Are you a big fan of Pilsners? Are you a big fan of light lagers? Did you know that this was the OG Pilsner? Let us know what you think. Are you offended it got a 2 on 5 or a 2.33 on 5? Do you think it should have rated higher? We'd love to hear what you think. If you want to check out some more of our content, subscribe. We hope to see you soon, guys. Take care. Cheers. As always, don't forget to close the beer brackets.